Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In New Grange, an hour north of Dublin by the River Boyne, there is a 5,200-year-old burial chamber with a latch-key slot in the ceiling the size of a shoebox. In the late days of December, for a manner of minutes, each dark day that slot aligns with the sun at its furthest perigee stunningly. The room then is illumined by light. There in the shadow consumed time, light exfoliates. In the gray-brown death of trench warfare during World War I, British soldiers prayed and sang in the bleak midwinter by Christina Rossetti. They found comfort and hope in her words. In the bleakness of winter war, God's presence will make flee the sting of death. Jesus if stable born surely may find a place even in a trench longing for hope and light and life they sang for the deliverance of an angel's kiss of light such the hymn promises and rossetti's poem reminds us if read in totality that no matter who or where one is or how much one has, there is always an opportunity to gift one's heart. There is a quality to the Christmas witness, a light that exfoliates the hope that comes to trenches. We've come tonight to our screens or in person in our pajamas and slippers, or in our Christmas finery. We come under the shadow of COVID after a bitter political fight following a year highlighted by violence, weary of our walk through 2020. Sorrowful for the losses we have suffered, the the losses of events marking life's transitions like graduation and also after the losses of friends and relatives and close family. We come tonight seeking a word of hope, a vision of light and life. We come in the bleakness of our midwinters, in the shadow of our consumed lives. We come tonight knowing and remembering a narrative that has long spoken to our hearts, a narrative of Christ, a manger, a star, and angels, a narrative of hope and the news that God will never leave us. God does not abandon us to the pain of life or even to our trenches. The Christmas message Each gospel proclaims, each saint has sung out. They all make a witness. Christ comes. Christ comes regardless of our time, our context, our lives. Christ comes when tables are filled with family and when they are not. Christ comes for us no matter where we are. Christ comes to us wherever our family and friends may be found on this physically distanced Christmas Eve. We are reminded tonight, whether we be far off or near, Christ is present. We come tonight so that the scales may fall from our eyes and our hearts to remember true joy, love, and hope. Not from old yet beloved traditions that normally make up the season, but rather to remember because of life-giving friendships and relationships and the power of Christmas Eve 
liturgy and worship. There is an ever-present experience and acknowledgement of Christ's tenacious coming. But there is also that longing for hope not yet quenched that requires, if you will, an eschatological imagination to see a, a not yet experienced Christmas of bleak midwinter trenches. As Howard Thurman, a 19th century author and theologian, says, wherever perfect love has long been delayed, Christmas is waiting to be reborn. Where refugees seek deliverance that never comes, he writes, and the heart consumes itself as if it would live where children age before their time and life wears down the edges of the mind where the old man sits with mind grown cold while bones and sinew, blood and cell go slowly down to death, where fear companions each day's life and perfect love seems long delayed. Christmas is waiting to be born in you, in me, in mankind. Christmas tide is not simply the remembering It is also always and everywhere a reminding reminding ourselves that there is a purpose to it. Christ, you see, invades the bleakness with eternity. We believe in an inbreaking of Christ just as in the lighting of that chamber at Newgrange. We remember even now the longest night has begun its fading. The Nativity's incarnation is not limited to a time far away, but is the everyday upending and reversal where Christmas is yet to be born. We take on the light. We may hold it in our hand, small candles against a shadowy night. Together, it is even brighter. And in that light, we remember Christ comes. Thurman challenges us when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the The work of Christmas begins to find the lost and heal the broken and feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nation, to bring peace among people, and to make music in the heart. We are to be the light in the darkness, the comforter to the comfortless, the healer of the breach. We are the messengers. We are the gospelers who dare walk every day of the year into the bleak midwinter trenches of another. Now one might ask, where is Christmas hope to be found in this hour? Christmas love, where is it? The nativity light. I will answer. It is in the heart of the ER nurse whose story crossed my desk this last week. An ER nurse for whose patient the vaccine will come too late. But nevertheless, she walks into the room with comfort, love, and light to greet her charge and to say in their bleak midwinter, angels are gathered here. Christ comes to this lowly place for nothing in earth can keep your Savior away. 
Alfred Lord Tennyson penned my ending words for this Christmas Eve. Ring in the valiant man, woman, child, and the free. The larger heart, ring in the kindlier hand and ring out the darkness of this land. Ring in the Christ that is to be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.